I'm T-Pain from ImpatientProgrammer.net. This is PySide and PyQT Q tree widget in four minutes. Tree widgets are tiny doohickeys that grow under the brickleberry branches beneath the bunions and basil bug eyes, and dogs hate them. Not really. <laughs> I'm surprised I got that first try. A Q tree widget is very similar to the list widget with two major differences. First, tree widgets can have items parented to each other, and secondly, tree widgets have columns. Tree widgets are called such because they are designed similar to a tree data structure. This is a simple data structure where there is a root, in this case, this would be our widget, and then every item added in will branch off of the root or its children. Let's look at a simple example. Before we dive in the code, let's go ahead and demo it. So here we have our example running, and inside of it, we have two items, carrots and carrot, with a cost next to them. And that's pretty much it. We have a twirl down feature right here. It's pretty simple and straightforward. All right, let's examine the code. We start at the top with the same import and application code we've used in previous tutorials. Then we instance our Qtree widget and set its header labels right here. The header is the top bar along the widget with the text labels for the different columns. Next, we instance our Q tree widget item by passing in the tree widget right here that it will be parented to for the first argument and a list of strings for each column's data in the item right here. And since we passed in the parent as an argument, we do not need to set up the parents later. After that, we create a child item parented to the previous item CG right here. And that's it. Now let's look at a more complex example demonstrating more features. All right, and let's go ahead and run this code. So we have our Q tree widget just as before with the carrots and the sub item carrots as below, just as before. But now we have a simple little checkbox next to the topmost item carrots right here. We also have an item called ham, which we cannot select. We can select carrot, but we cannot select ham. Awesome. Okay, the first major change that I did was I set alternating row colors right here to be true, just to make things clear to the user. I've also added a check state to the first item for no reason at all, just to demo it. We then create one last item without a parent being passed into the arguments. We set it to be disabled and add it to the tree item widget right here. Note that there are other ways that you can construct widgets and widget items. These just happen to be my favorite. And now for some common functions. For the Q tree widget, you can add top level item with an item passed in to an add an item at root level. You can also add top level items to add multiple of them simultaneously within an item collection. Item pressed and item clicked are two signals used for when an item is pressed or clicked. Said alternating row does, you guessed it, says alternating rows. Insert top level item and insert top level items allow you to insert items at rows other than the default. For Q tree widget items, you have add child, which allows you to add a child to the current tree widget item or add children, which takes in a collection like a list or tuple, whatever you like. Next there's set hidden so you can hide or show specific items. You can set disabled to make sure that the user cannot interact with them. You can set the icon to make it pretty. You can set tooltip for a specific column of the item, though you'll have to set them all manually if you have multiple tooltips. Finally, you have set check state, which allows you to make the item checkable. Excellent work, buddy. You are the best programmer ever. And I mean that. Exercises in the description. If you would like to see a practical application built from scratch, check out my tool development series linked below in the description. Thank you to all my wonderful patrons. And as always, like, subscribe, and keep the dream alive.